praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you please stand for the call to worship? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. For we are the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I said enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Because I know that the Lord has done something good for each and every one of you this week. So if the Lord has been good to you, let me hear you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Please join the choir in at our opening selection. that the Lord is worthy, that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who put shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, gave you a reasonable portion of health and strength, gave you a sound man, gave you hands to lift up and just give God all the worth all the praise that he is so worthy, and he deserves it, not we ourselves. So thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah, God. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. This morning, our scripture is going to be coming from 1 Peter. 1 Peter. That is the book before 2 Peter. 1 Peter, in the New Testament, we're going to be coming from chapter 1. Y'all look good this morning, but y'all look quiet for me. I don't want to work 
the choir too much, but I tell you, God has been good, and he is worthy to be praised. First Peter, I see some faces I hadn't seen, and I see those of you with smiles on your faces. Hallelujah. It's so good to see all of you. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter, the first chapter. First Peter, the first chapter. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right. Verse 18. And we're, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. And the word of God reads, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unseen love of the brethren, See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be unto God. Church, it's praying time. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer to keep your hearts in tune. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord God, just thanking you for another day's journey. Lord God, just recognizing who you are and where you reign. For you are a God that sits high and looks low. And Father God, for that we say thank you. Lord God, we're going to ask that you forgive us for all sin, every trespass that we have made and for those that have been trespassed against us. In the name of your son, Jesus, Lord God, wash us clean so that we may receive your word today. That your word shall fall on good ground, Lord God. Father God, that it shall sow a seed, Lord God, that will tell others about a man named Jesus. And Father God, we ask that this waiting congregation, Lord God, that their eyes see, Lord God, that their ears hear what thus saith the Lord. For we know that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all else else that we ask or we think according to the power that worketh in us. So Lord God allow that power to manifest itself today in a way that it hasn't ever before Lord God that some child, some woman, boy or girl will come running asking what must I do to be saved? Lord God we just thank you Lord God for every person that is present Lord God. We ask that you bless them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord God we we ask that that blessing extend to their household, Lord God, that you rain down your loving spirit, your loving kindness, Lord God, on the walls and the doors and the floors, Lord God, that wherever their feet may try, their steps shall be ordered in your word, that the iniquities of this world shall not take dominion of their lives, Lord God. We ask that you remove spiritual blindness, Lord God, that the eyes be open, Lord God, so that they will know the wondrous works out of thy law. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for those that have come after being on their sick bed. Lord God, we know that your name is Jehovah Rapha. You are a healer, Lord God. We thank you for how you spread your healing power from their household, Lord God. And for those that are still sick, Lord God, whether they are in the sanctuary or on Facebook, Lord God, I ask right now that you ease their pain. 
that you ease their suffering, that you make them a whole again, Lord God. Lord God, that you abase any fever, Lord God, Lord, and any care that they are receiving. Lord God, I ask that it be done with compassion and with love and with patience. Lord God, we're going to ask that you bless our community, Lord God. It has been ravaged by violence, Lord God. But Father God, we know that you still sit on the throne. For you said in your word that if all people who are called by your name will humble themselves and seek your face and pray, then you will heal our land. So God, right now, we are seeking your face. We are praying out to you, Lord God, to heal our land, take every ill, every ism, every evil, Lord God, and turn it into good. Because we know that you have all power in your hands. And Lord God, we're gonna ask that you bless the children as they're out of school, Lord God. Father God, give them an activity to keep their minds occupied. Strengthen their knowledge so that when they go back to the schools, the teachers don't have to work so hard, Lord God. Enable the parents, Lord God, to recognize that training begins at home. Lord God, you told us to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will depart from you not. So Lord God, I just ask that you continue, Lord God, to bless our children. And Lord God, bless our Third Baptist family, Lord God. In a mighty, mighty, mighty way, Lord God, as we seek an under-shepherd, Lord God, to, to cover this house of Zion, Lord God. You have blessed us for 181 years, Lord God. We have been through the fire. We have been through slavery. We have been through wars, Lord God. We have been through pandemic, Lord God. But we're still standing. So God, right now, I ask that you pour out your spirit among your men and your women, Lord God that they will pray, Lord God, and seek you for an answer, Lord God, that they don't get caught up in show or fashion, if they don't get caught up in a, what a man says or a woman says, Lord God, but they seek the spirit for their decision, Lord God. So we ask that you pour it out abundantly upon each and every one of us. Lord God, we know that for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it, God's gonna see through. Hold your head up, put a smile on your face. This is another test, this for us always. So get ready, get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracles. You've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep on holding on. So get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle.
blessing with your name on it. Paris was singing that song like she know that her blessing is on the way. And I tell you, I couldn't help but smile as I was thinking about it because I know that God has blessed some of you mightily. And I just thank him for what he's done. There's a song that say, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. So God's blessings are always good. Whether it's something we need or something we want. And I tell you, I even had a thought, and I'm going to share it with you. And hopefully some of you won't say, what in the world was she thinking? But I started thinking about Frankie, Beverly, and Mays. And I thought about how when they come out with that same groove that was in that song, how everybody gets on the floor and they rock from side to side. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But God's got a blessing with your name on it. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Do we have any visitors with us today? Any visitors? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Would you like to share your name? And where you're from? Amen. Bless you, bless you. Yes, ma'am. Amen, amen. And look, the brother sat down, but we're going to call on you too. <laughs> we saw you standing. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Sister Karen, you look, you've been here, so we you are at home, honey. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we have a very special way of welcoming our visitors. Third Baptist, will you help me welcome our vis visitors? Welcome. We, the members of Third Baptist Church, gladly welcome you, our visitors, to our church home. If you are seeking Christ, you will find him here. If you are sorrowing, you will find comfort. If you are troubled in spirit, you will gain the blessings of peace. If you are discouraged, you will rejoice in hope. If you are friendless, you will find companionship and Christian love. That these and all blessings may be your portion is our prayer. Amen. And we want to give you a third Baptist hug, so we ask that you open your eyes, open your arms, and receive it from us. Third Baptist, let's welcome our visitors. One, two, three. God bless you, and please, please come again. We have a few announcements for you this morning. Um, as you see, I'm, I'm standing here doing all of this and hoping that I have enough breath to, to, to preach the word, and I'm leaning and depending on, on God to just get us through, not just this day, but always. Amen. The following are announcements for July 16th, 2023. Praise God for his goodness and his mercy. Today, we thank God for four young men who were baptized on yesterday. Would you all stand up so people can see you? Yes. Amen. Yeah, they were baptized on yesterday. You may be seated. Yes, we extend congratulations to Zion Baptist Church, Petersburg, on their 57th anniversary. 
Elementary and middle school graduates will be recognized on August 13th. Ministry leaders, we ask that you continue to coordinate with your ministry. The men's ministry will meet on July 30th after worship service. And men are being sought to sing in the men's chorus on Men's Day in September. And I know two people I've already called out. Do I need to call y'all names? Brother Danielle, Mr. King, I've heard those voices singing. Prayers and condolences are extended to all who have suffered sickness, loss, or bereavement, or have been impacted by shootings and incidents of violence throughout our world. Counseling and other support services are available. Third Baptist, what time is it? Deacon and ushers take charge.
Are you ready for the word? Yes. After, I don't need to tell you who's preaching today, do I? <laughs> Amen. I just ask that you pray with me and pray for me. After the next selection, the word of God will be brought forth. Amen. Tell you of 
his favor I'll tell you of his love I'll tell you of his goodness to me he purchased my redemption with his precious blood since I've been set free
trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. So much trouble. I had to cry sometimes. I lay away at night. But that's all right. I know Jesus. Oh! 
Let it go. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Mm. Woo. Thank you, God. Mm. Jesus will fix it. Oh, thank you, God. Mm. Oh, Spirit of the Living God. Woo. Spirit of the Living God. Fall fresh on us, Lord God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us, make us, mold us, fill us, Lord God, with your spirit. Yes. Spirit of the living God, yes. fall fresh on us. Lord God, I thank you for the choir today. I thank them for ushering in the spirit of worship. I thank them for the musicians. And I thank God for all of you, for your presence. It's time for the word. It's time for the reason that we walk through these doors to hear the word of God. You have heard the reading of the scripture from 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. And I encourage you to go back when you return home today to read those verses. But I'm just going to lift up the 18th and the 19th verse, Amen. which reads, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for all things that have been done, Lord God, and the things that have been prepared just for today. Lord God, right now I ask that you take this little preacher, Lord God, and stand her flat foot and ready for the things that you have pulled together, Lord God, that they come forth with clarity, that they come forth with power, and Lord, that they come forth with conviction. Lord God, I just thank you for the opportunity to stand here. I count it not robbery each opportunity that I am given to even just call on the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to preach to your people. So open the eyes, the ears, the hearts, Lord God, and their minds right now in the name of Jesus, that every word said or action taken, Lord God, shall be for your glory and your glory alone. Father God, I ask for forgiveness of sin. I wash my hands in the basin, Lord God, that you may cover me in my entire body. Lord God, that if there's anything that is not pleasing to thee, Lord God, I ask that you remove it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For Lord, I know that I'm not worthy. For Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for how you have blessed me, Lord God. And I thank you that I'm still standing, Lord God, on the promises of God. And Lord God, I just ask your people today, Lord God, that what is received, Lord God, be received with love. Lord God, right now, I just lift you up and I magnify your holy and your righteous name. For there is none other like you, God. None other like you. 
Father God, right now, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen and amen. You know, every Sunday, um, we've had an announcement asking for people to pray for all of the people impacted by violence and incidents of violence around this world. And I'm just going to dedicate this message to one young lady who was taken away from us before, much too young. Her name is Shamisha Sims. And I hear the voices of all of those who have been silenced, but I hear them loudly and clearly by those who love them. And so for a subject this morning, I'm going to talk about God's redemptive love. The message title is, I Am Redeemed. I want you to know that God's redemptive plan did not just begin in the New Testament. It did not just begin with Jesus or the prophets, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Peter, Paul. But God's redemptive plan started a long, long, long time ago. But see, it's here in 1 Peter. In the first chapter, those verses 18 through 25, that we find that Peter tells it like it is. We are given the doctrinal message of redemption. Peter makes it plain for us, just as Sister Major's song, that we are redeemed, bought with a price. Jesus has changed our whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, you ought to be able to tell them that I am redeemed. Amen. Because our redemption and our standing is not because of who we are, but it's because of who we know. If we look back to the very beginning and if we look at Adam and Eve, we find that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had everything that they could ever need. They were living in paradise. They had food and shelter and dominion, and they had a special relationship with God because they had God all to themselves. But one day, because of the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they sinned. And in their sin, guilt and shame replaced peace and harmony. See, freedom was replaced with bondage. And the good was now tainted with evil. I know that y'all know this story. And one day they heard God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid themselves among the trees. And the Lord called out to Adam and he said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice, and I was afraid. I was naked. And the Lord asked him, who told you you were naked? And see, at that very moment, God's plan of redemption began. And so it's not important to say, well, who sinned first? Was it Adam? Was it Eve? But what is important to know is that when we sin, we serve a loving God. We serve a forgiving God. We serve a jealous God. We serve a God who is omniscient, one who knows all things, a God who is all-powerful. He is an omnipotent God, and he knew just then that we needed to see just a glimpse of the gospel in the making right there from the beginning. Genesis 3.15 states that I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise thy heel. See, in other words, God is letting us know that Satan is our enemy, that he will place a spiritual barrier between us and Satan. 
so that Satan's people can't get to God's people. If he gets to us, that's because even though God may have allowed it, but what we do with it and how we handle it is all dependent upon our faith. And that the Redeemer will come from the woman and deliver the death blow to Satan. Putting the enemy exactly where he belongs. Somebody say he belongs under our feet. So we got to learn to shake the devil off. And I want you to know that today I'm going to do my best to not keep you all day, but I'm going to travel from Genesis to Revelation because I want you to know that God's redemptive plan did not begin just in the New Testament. So as I'm moving down Route 66, and I'm going to tell you right now, Dee Dee, I'm in the left lane. So I want y'all to keep up with me because I'm going to the book of Isaiah. And see, in the book of Isaiah in chapter 43, we find that the Lord lets us know that he is our only redeemer. And see, Isaiah was a prophet that they called the eagle eye prophet because he had the ability to prophesy the future redemption of all people. So I don't want you to think he was just talking to the nation of Israel. He is talking to all of God's people. And see, when Isaiah prophesies, Isaiah prophesies as though it had already occurred because in Chapter 53, Isaiah says that he was wounded for our transgression, that he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. See, Isaiah lets us know that the Lord laid the iniquity of all of us on Jesus Christ. And see, Christ was oppressed and he was afflicted, but he opened not his mouth. See, he was brought as a lamb to slaughter. See, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and for you and me, he died. But just like the people in Isaiah's day, the prophet's words fell on deaf ears. Isaiah said, we are sheep that have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And so the people would not listen then, they would not adhere, and they would not believe what thus saith the Lord. But see, our God stands strong and mighty, and he continues to let us know that he is Lord, and that he is our Redeemer. You see, the nation of Israel had forgotten how God had delivered them out of bondage, how he had brought them out of Egypt. They had gotten caught up in the wilderness. They became lost and confused. See, they were bitter and weakened by the cares of the world. They began to focus on anything and everything but God, just like some of us today. See, they had tied their salvation to men, choosing to look at those who look holy instead of those who walked holy, instead of those who were holy. See, they got trapped by man's ways, by man's desires, by man's lies, and by man's schemes, and by man's promises. They had even started dismissing who God is, the almighty God. Uh And today, God has moved this entire nation through a pandemic, through a pandemic, trapped in our homes, afraid to go to the stores. We made Amazon so rich that Walmart started delivering groceries. Kroger started delivering groceries. Food Lion started delivering groceries. But today, we can come out with a little bit of comfort, with some assurance, God has brought us through. He has enabled us to hear the word of God. It doesn't matter if you're listening on Facebook or you're sitting in the sanctuary. As long as you hear the word of God, as long as you allow it to penetrate your heart, convict your soul, and cause you to do some self-examination, then the word is doing what it is supposed to do. But just like then and just like now in Deuteronomy 9 and 13, the Lord says, I have seen these people and they are stiff-necked people. 
And I know y'all don't want to hear it, but we are some stiff neck folk. You know, we, we too are sheep that have gone astray. We also have turned to our own way. We're consumed with what is happening in our life, what is happening in somebody else's life, that we have forgotten that Christ said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh to the Father except through him. But see, they still, no matter how much they hear the word of God, they refuse to believe in God. They say that they believe. Y'all met those people that say, I believe in a higher power, but they can't tell you his name. You got folks who say, I'm religious, but I'm not spiritual. Or they say, I'm spiritual, I'm just not religious. They say they want to come to church, but they don't want to come to church because of the people in the church. You got folks who say that they are children of God, but see, they won't give a dime to a ministry. They won't serve on a ministry. They won't even love each other. They won't pray together. They talk about the preachers. They talk against the church leaders. They won't even speak a kind word to one another. Some of them will go all around the church just to avoid saying good morning. But see, God is letting us know that he is tired of our mess. See, he's tired of the backbiting. He's tired of the gossiping. He's tired of the hatefulness. He's tired of the arrogance. He's tired of the evil ways. And he's letting us know that because you are mine and I am yours, that you need to act. You need to be holy. God is holy, so we should be holy. We should walk holy. We should talk holy. And he is letting us know, thank you, Danny, to live holy. And he is letting us know in Isaiah 43 and 1, he says that I have created thee. I am the one that formed thee. For I have redeemed thee. And I have called thee by name because thou art mine. God is letting us know that we are his and he is ours. He gives us the ability to do what we do. He created us for his pleasure, not for mine, he, not even for yours. He created us for his pleasure, to do his will, because we are precious in his sight. See, God knows our name, and he lets us know that it is truth. And see, God knows our name, but do we know his name? Do we know that he is our creator? His name is Elohim. See, he is a powerful God. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He's a God who provides for us. His name is El Elyon. He is the God most high. And his name is Yahweh. See, he is a God of promises. And see, he lets us know that if you don't believe what I say, in Isaiah 43, he tells you to let all the nations come together. Bring forth your witnesses that they may be justified and let them hear and say it's truth. Family, we need to stand out at any given time and be a witness to the grace of God. Say it, say it. Be a witness to his everlasting mercy. Yeah. Be a witness to his goodness and his power. We call that power that wonder-working power. See, God has that Holy Ghost power. He's got that delivering power, and he's got that sanctifying power, and he has the redeeming power. Because every moment that you are awake, even though you may not know what's going on, the Holy Spirit is acting on your behalf. He is interceding, and Christ is right there because Satan, the accuser, is ready to stand witness against you. That's but right. thanks be to God that he says to us, when we pass through the water, I will be with thee. When we go through the rivers, they will not overflow us. And when we walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Uh -huh. And see, if you don't believe it, I can call on some witnesses today. See, I want to call on David. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yeah. I will fear no evil, uh -huh. for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And then he goes on and says, surely goodness and mercy, mercy. shall follow me 
the days of my life. And if y'all need another witness, I call on this little girl who got caught up in a house fire. Everybody had gotten out of the house. There was smoke and flames everywhere. The curtains were on fire. The doors and the walls, things burning down all around her. She could hear screaming outside. Where is she? Where is my child? She's still in the house. She could hear the sirens coming up the road. And then this little girl started hiding up under the bed. But all of a sudden, a voice said, come on, take my hand. Walk with me. And while everybody was looking for this child, she was standing on the porch. Nobody knew how she got there. But she stands here today preaching the word of God. Because God didn't have to keep me. God didn't have to let me walk through there. God didn't have to keep me from getting burned. God made a way. And I tell you, even on this day, right now, I cannot tell you how I got out of that house. And it doesn't matter because I know that the voice that I heard was the voice from God. So I tell you, we serve an omniscient God, a God that loves us, a God that has plans for us, a God that has decided I am not letting you go right now, that he still has his hands on each and every one of us, that there is something for each and every one of you to do in the house of God. So don't get stuck in your ways. Don't wait for somebody to ask you. If you can teach Sunday school, then teach Sunday school. If you can join a ministry and be an evangelist, then go out and tell somebody about the goodness of God. If you can sing or if you think you can sing, come on in the choir and sing God's praises. God has been good to us. So we don't need to hear all the time about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because I can tell you that I have walked through the fire and I did not get burned. And each and every morning when I get up in the morning, I say, thank you, Jesus, because as I step into my building, I say, Lord, order my steps in your work. When I take another step, I say, thank you, Jesus. When I get to my office, I say, do not let any iniquity that will come through these doors take dominion over my life. I tell you, family, you don't know how good God is. He doesn't have to have an event for you to know, because I know that some of you have been on your sick bed. Some of you didn't know that you were even part of the living. But look at you today. You're standing. You're standing giving God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. So don't tell me God won't do it. Be a witness. Because Satan is standing as a witness against each and every one of you. We got to put on the whole armor of God when we walk out. We got to take this sword of the spirit and we got to understand what is in it. We got to have our feet shod with the gospel of peace, not carrying no mess, always starting something. Say it, say and it. And then using that excuse, I got to be me. Uh -huh. My, this my mouth. This Come is on. who Come I on. am. This Tell is it. how God made me. Tell oh, no. Yeah. God gives us one mouth and two ears for a reason. Yeah. And in between here is something called a filter. And so you ought to think about what you're saying before it comes out of your mouth. And if you can't have control, then ask the Lord to set a watch over your mouth. I didn't mean to go there. Come on, come on. But for some reason it needed to be said today. Tell it, tell it. But here in our scripture, here in our scripture, in 1 Peter, Peter is making it plain. Uh -huh. Peter lets us know, and if you'll allow me to paraphrase just a little bit, I won't take away from the gospel. But Peter says that we have been redeemed not with corruptible things. Uh -huh. See, in other words, our redemption is because of righteousness and holiness. It is not because of wickedness or evil. He lets us know that we have been redeemed not by silver or gold. So those of you with big bank accounts, I'm just going to tell you, you cannot buy your way into heaven. You see, it doesn't mean how big your house is or what type of car you drive or how much money you got in say your bank. It, he lets us know that we 
have been redeemed not by silver or gold. Uh -huh. And then he says that we have been redeemed not by vain conversation. See, Peter is also letting us know, family, that you cannot talk your way into salvation. Man. So it doesn't matter how many letters are behind your name or how eloquent you might look or how you articulate your words, how you enunciate or how you provocate. See, it doesn't matter any of that because you cannot talk your way into heaven. And see, it doesn't matter how puffed up you get. It doesn't matter if you get mad with me or if you can shout louder than anybody else. I tell you, Rep. Um, Mr. Avery always say to me, have you rolled up on anybody today and stood two feet tall? But it doesn't matter if I'm puffed up or if I stand two feet tall. It doesn't matter because we cannot talk or yell or shout our way into heaven. Yeah. And then lastly, Amen. Peter says, our redemption is not because of tradition by your fathers. So see, it doesn't matter if this is the way it has always been. If somebody want to change up something, be open <laughs> to change. Uh, change. It doesn't matter if Pastor Cherry did service this way or Reverend Bullock does service this way. It does not matter because God is letting us know that tradition is not going to get you in. Say so. When people say, I want it to be the way it used to be. So. We should never want things to be the way that it Same. used to be. Yeah. We should want things to be better than what it used to be. So he's letting us know that our redemption is not by corruptible things, not because of silver and gold, not because of vain, vain conversations, and not because of the tradition by our fathers, but our redemption is because of Jesus Christ. See, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. See, he was the only one who could go to the cross on our behalf. See, Buddha couldn't do it. Muhammad couldn't do it. Mahatma Gandhi couldn't do it. The Virgin Mary couldn't do it. Sister Teresa couldn't do it. Only Jesus Christ. And it says that he was manifest in these last times just for you. See, nothing but the blood of Jesus could set us free from the guilt and penalty of sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus could set us apart from the enemy. And nothing but the blood of Jesus could buy us salvation. And see, his blood on the cross, when you confess Jesus Christ, there is a power that dwells inside of you that will help you establish God's kingdom right here on earth. That will give you the power and the authority to fight Satan. Because Revelations 12, I told you we're going from Genesis to Revelation. Revelations 12 said, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb uh -huh. and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Yesterday, David, Louis, Joe, and Antoine gave their testimony. They gave it for all to hear that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, and they let us know that they accept him as their personal savior. They were then therefore baptized, meaning that they were buried with Christ through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, they too one day will have a new life. See, God has set these young men apart, and he has justified them because of their faith all because of Jesus Christ and his precious blood. Mm -hmm. You see, there was power in that blood because it was a special kind of blood. See, it was an innocent blood. It was a willing blood. See, Jesus carried for us that life-giving blood. He carried that sanctifying blood that drained down on the cross. He gave us that heaven opening blood. See, Jesus had that avenging blood. He had the blood that will make demons tremble just at the sound of his name. See, he had that protecting blood, that provisioning blood, that cleansing blood, and that redeeming blood. Yeah. There's power 
in the blood of Jesus Christ. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you understand that Jesus lives because God has raised him from the dead. But think about it, family. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, if it had not been for Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, where would we be? See, Jesus paid it all and all to him we owe. Over 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, Jesus took on all of our sins and our diseases, but he did not deserve it. He accepted it, but he had not earned it. He heard them curse him, but he did not say a mumbling word. He felt every nail that was driven in his hand, but he stood there. He did not fight back. They did not take his life. I need you to understand that he gave it willingly. And when he gave his life for us, he sealed our salvation. When he rose with all power in his hands. I want you to picture this as I close. If you and I were standing on the auction block, all of our sins exposed to the world, all of our sicknesses and our diseases exposed to the world. Yeah. And they ask, who will pay for this person? You got liar, cheater, backstabber, slanderer, murderer. All around you, you got cancer, diabetes, arthritis, all kinds of sicknesses and ailments. And you stand there because you know that the person that will purchase you will free you from the penalty of all that sin, that he can fix all your diseases. And who would stand for you? Because God is saying that only one can satisfy this debt. And Jesus Christ said, I will do it. I'll pay it. I'll pay for their sins. Cast it upon me. I'll pay for their diseases. Give it to me. Because I know that one day they will rise again. And I know that one day they will walk and they will live for me. So Jesus Christ paid it all for you. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, then that tag is still around your neck. You're still in bondage. You have not been set free. Because only the truth will set you free. And that truth is Jesus Christ. So God thought that you were worth saving. Do you believe it? Give Christ your life today as you stand on your feet. If there is one, the doors of the church are now open. If there is one, you've heard the gospel preach. If you want to be baptized, I ask that you come forth. Or join by Christian experience. Or rededicate your life. Or you can join us by watch care. Won't you come as the choir sings?
listen to what she's saying. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. You thought I was worth saving. My God. Woo! Thank you, God. Yeah, God. Mm. My God. My God. My God. At this time, we're going to ask that our baptism candidates come up so that we can do the presentation of the certificates and give the right hand a fellowship. morning church today we'll be presenting our candidates with um, certificates in their envelopes and I'll just read one of them this is the certified that Antoine Anderson was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost on the 15th day of July 2023 at Third Baptist Church know ye not that so many of us as were baptized in, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, but like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk into the newness of life. And that comes from Romans 6, 3 through 4. David, David Card, Cardis. Cloudy. Thank you, David. Joseph Jackson. And Lewis Smith. As we stated yesterday, these four men were baptized. So let's give them another hand clap of praise. And now if the officers will come forward so that we can extend the right hand of fellowship.
ushers come forth. As we transition to communion, it was on a Thursday evening that Jesus and his disciples made ready for the Passover in an upper room. Jesus knew that his time was at hand. He knew that the time had come for him to die for the sins of the world. And it was at this time that he instituted the Lord's Supper. As he sat around the bread, he knew that he would be betrayed. And the disciples asked, Lord, is it I? And he said that the one that dips his hand in this cup will betray me. And then Jesus took the bread and said that this is the bread that represents my body. And this is the cup that represents the blood that will be shed for mankind. And when you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do remember the Lord's death until he comes. And so the disciples asked, and they said to him, Lord, forevermore, please give us this bread. And Jesus said that he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I ask right now that two of the deacons would come forth. That as you take of this communion, that you will take a moment to self-examine yourself and ask the Lord for forgiveness of sin. For if you drink of the cup and eat of the bread unworthy, you do bring damnation to the body of Christ. So at this time, I'm going to ask, is there anyone who has been omitted? Anyone to my left? Is there anyone to my right? Is there anyone in the balcony or in the center? Let us all pray together. Father God, we thank you for this bread and for this cup. Lord God, we thank you for the representation of your body and the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Lord God, I ask right now for forgiveness of sin on behalf of myself and your people in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask that as we partake of this communion, that we realize that it also signifies not only your death, but the anticipation of your return. So Father God, take it from a carnal use and make it into a spiritual use. We ask it all right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
to extinguish the candles, please? At this time, we're going to ask if there be one who asks for special prayer, but I'm going to ask that we all stand on one accord and pray as we search for a pastor, that we pray together. But those who wish to come to the altar, please feel free to do so. I don't want you to think I'm discouraging that. But I'm asking right now that in addition to your prayer, your need, that we pray that God brings the right person to serve as an under shepherd for this house of Zion. And therefore, I'm going to ask Reverend Brenda Cherry. If you would lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for all that has been said and done. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the presence of your spirit in the house today. We thank you, dear God, for the blessings, Heavenly Father, that you have showered down upon us. We thank you, dear God, for you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we have ever been to ourselves. And we thank you, dear God. And now, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, for that person, Heavenly Father, who has come forward with a special need, Heavenly Father. We pray, dear God, that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. Lift that burden, Heavenly Father. Remind them, dear God, that you still just a prayer away. Remind them, Heavenly Father, that you are able to do all things but fail. Remind them, Heavenly Father, that you still have all power in your hand, that you still know all things, and that you're still everywhere at the same time. Remind them, Heavenly Father, that you are immutable. You never change. Whatever your word says, you mean it. And we can take that to the bank. And we thank you, dear God, for what you're going to do for us. We thank you, dear God, for everything. And Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray and look forward to a new pastor, Dear God, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to send who you want. Send who you know we need. Touch, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We know your will is best for us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we allow our will to line up with your will. And we will be blessed. Heavenly Father, it's hard sometimes. We don't always agree. But Heavenly Father, we should be able to disagree without being disagreeable. And we thank you, dear God, for the love that you have for us. And may that love spread from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We need you, Lord. We need you, Heavenly Father. Send that man that woman here that third Baptist need it ain't because of somebody we want but whoever is in your will and we thank you for the blessings that's headed our way thank you. Lord somebody somebody Heavenly Father I feel it in my spirit somebody Heavenly Father is heavy burden Father, don't know which way to turn. Somebody, Heavenly Father, is at the crossroads and don't know which way to go. But dear God, let them, let them know, Heavenly Father, that you're still there. Touch, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Touch, Heavenly Father. Lift that burden. Dry those tears. Light that way, dear God, so that they know, Heavenly Father, you are still God, and there is none other, none other like you, none other. 
we leave this place but never from God's presence may the love of God the sweet presence of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide henceforth now and forevermore let us all say amen somebody say I am redeemed <laughs> 